so it's hard to believe that I'm saying this, but seven days ago I started on NixOS, and I the reason why I can't believe I'm saying it is because it's been seven days. Like it's it feels like a much shorter amount of time. But I figured that it's time for me to tell you how it's going. So I've been using it for seven days. I'm still using it. So actually, we, just to prove it, I will open up a terminal and show you so that you can actually see. So. This is my NixOS system. I'm I'm Plasma right now. I spent most of my time in Hyperland, but I'm just trying some different things out and needed to be in Plasma for a while. So uh, th this is where I'm at. It's been seven days. Obviously, obviously got a long way to go. I won't be making an, uh, an update video for you guys every week. The next one will be like a month out or something. But I have some thoughts. So the first thing that I should say is that I'm taking this much more slowly than some of the next guys want me to take it, but I don't think that that's a problem. I, I haven't delved deep into home manager or anything like that, but I have managed to set my, up my own flake, and actually I'll show you. I'll show you my flake. So I have a flake. So if I go into my NixOS folder, oops, if I, if I actually remember how to do this, which which is silly because I do that all the time. This is my flake, and if you t if I take a look at the flake.nix file you can see that I have some things set up. And for the first time ever, I can explain what this file does for me. Now, there are going to be some NixOS guys out there that are going to have a more technical explanation than what I'm about to provide you guys. And I, I will do a better job of a dedicated Flake video in a little while once I have more of my head wrapped around this. But as of right now, this is my understanding of what this file does. So if you want to know what a flake does, or if you ever wanted to know, this is what it does. So basically, and I'm not going to go through all the sections, I'll save that for the more in-depth video. This allows me to set up my system in such a way that I'm controlling the versions to a specific version of NixOS and the packages that I'm importing. So that allows me to basically control a static version of my system that can be carried from this computer to another computer or in my case, more likely, reinstalled on this computer, knowing that it's going to be the exact same version of everything. And that's controlled by the Flake itself with a Flake lock file. And that sounds cool. I'm not sure how useful it is for me yet because I haven't had to reinstall the system. Like, I'm assuming that if I have to go reinstall the system, this will be very useful. As of right now, that's fine. Really what I've been using this for, and I know that you can do this with a standard Nix configuration as well, but I just decided to use a flake for it, is I've, I've managed to modularize my configuration file so that each one of these is just a smaller version of itself. So it's kind of like my Hyperland config where I have a whole bunch of things sourced from the main configuration file into much smaller, more manageable, manageable bytes. Basically what I've been using this for as well. Now, there, obviously, flakes are much more powerful than that, and one of the ways actually that I've discovered to do that or more had pointed out to me is this Nix dash flatpak thing. Basically what this allows me to do, if I go into my modules and go into another one of my things here, is I can actually install all of my flat packs inside of my NixOS configuration. That means that were I to need to go to another computer or reinstall this, all of my flat packs would come along with once I've actually rebuilt based on that configuration. That's awesome. Now, it's not going to bring all the data along with it, which is something that I would have to use Home Manager to do, I believe. But I would at least have the applications here along with me. And I wouldn't have to remember all the flat packs that I had installed because they're all right here in the file. I wouldn't have to write a script, which I've had to do in the past, to reinstall them all without having to do them one by one. It's all just here in the configuration file. That means, like I said, if I were to have to reinstall, they'd all be installed alongside all the other applications, which you can see actually all my other applications right here. I have done, as you can see, quite a few things. I've installed quite a bit of stuff. Most of my stuff is installed with regular packages. I have a few things down here that I've installed with flat packs for various reasons obs is the supported version of flat pack uh tick tick i believe that's the only way you can get is flat pack and vivoli the nixos vivoli package as far as i know is broken at least the last time i used nixos it was broken so i just defaulted to the flat pack it's always worked better than the the 
system package on any disk drive I've ever used it. So I just did it there. So most of my stuff is Nix OS based, but I have some flat packs. Most of my just regular configuration that Nix has been pulled out and put into those modules, but I still have things in here like the time zone and some of the services for system D and EFI and stuff like that and network and the network manager. And it, so I haven't taken it, taken it all out of the configuration.nix yet, and I think I'm probably just leave this. So I'm seven days in. I know a little bit more than I did before. And I think that's where I'm at right now is that I feel fairly confident. So for like ex for example, I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to scroll back up. No, nope, I don't have that history here. But just recently, I installed that flat pack thing that I showed you, and I had an error. And I was like, I haven't had an error yet. How do I troubleshoot this thing? So... I thought maybe that there was some NixOS way to troubleshoot because basically it was having trouble starting a service for Flatpak. And really the way to tr I found out to troubleshoot it was just to use the standard troubleshooting tools that Linux provides. So system CDL status for the service, it showed me what the service name was and all the stuff that was going and, and that it exited with an error code. And then it told me how to find what that error code, error code meant. I was able to use journal CTL to find that error code. Turns out that I had the wrong name for one of the flat packs that I had in my configuration. I went and fixed that thing and it fixed it. So a lot of the trouble, that's really the only troubleshooting I've had to do so far. That was more traditional Linux troubleshooting than I expected it to be, given how different everything else is on NixOS. Because everything else is different. So I think actually my biggest thing that I've had to cope with if I go into my scripts here, I have a whole bunch of scripts. And now I've done some cleaning up. So there's a, there's now a directory in here called old scripts that has some of the stuff in there that I just haven't used in a long time. Just, but for example, if I were going to my music script, there's a shebang here at the top. Hashtag exclamation point slash bin slash sh. Now this particular one would actually work, I believe, because as, that's where sh is. But... Ones like the, I, I think, like this one here, yes, this one here has, has the shebang at slash bin slash bash. Bash doesn't exist in the bin directory. Only sh does. And I, be, I believe even sh is a like a sim link or something. So all those bash experts out there who tell you that you should do something like this, slash user bin and, and then bash, like so, it, it, they were right. Because because that's the universal way of doing it on make to make sure that every it works on every distro, but for years I've been ignoring that advice and doing the one here at the top just because I've been using normal Linux distros and they all have Bash in in the bin directory and it's a few x less characters to type. You know I'm inherently lazy, so that those few extra characters would have stressed me out a little bit too much. I don't know. But anyways, that's the biggest thing I've had to do is go through and every single one of my scripts that I wanted to use, I had to go and correct that. Now, I know that there's some workarounds that you can do. There's a service that you can run in order to bypass the the, the necessity to have to do that. But I figured if I've stumbled across the situation once, I might as well just go through and fix it. Like make sure that it's future proofed in the fact in, in the case I go to another distro that also doesn't have bash in the right place and I need to use these things. So it was just easier that way. So I'm actually going to delete that and we'll have the right shebang there in this one here, even though I'm not going to be using that particular script. So I think that's probably the biggest, like, I'm not going to really call it a hurdle. It's just, that's more of a hurdle of my own making, I guess, because I haven't been doing it right all these years. So that's one of the things that I've kind of had to deal with is that some things just aren't where I expected them to be. And I knew that going in because I obviously I'd used NixOS before, so I knew that that was going to be a hurdle. But when I used NixOS before, I wasn't daily driving it. So a lot of this stuff seemed unimportant to me. But now I have to go through and make sure all my scripts are working. I have to make sure all the applications that I run are working. And some of that stuff, not, not nearly as many as I thought would happen, but you know, some of that stuff expects things to be in a certain place. Now, overall, it hasn't been that big of a deal, right? The, the scripts things was tedious, but I just, you know, did the ones that I used. And when I discovered one that wasn't going to work, I would just go and change it. And, do, you know, I've been kind of poking at it for the last week. And most of the scripts I have are there now. So that's like the biggest one. So overall, the experience has been fairly good. The NixOX community can be a little pushy at times, 
with some of the ways they want to do things. So if you visit the NixOS Discord, I don't know if it's the official one or the unofficial one, or if there is an official one, I don't even know. It's the one, one I'm in. Anyways, the they are can be a little pushy on the way that they do things. Because one thing I've discovered, and, and this is like Linux itself, is that there's no one way to use NixOS. There's, in fact, an infinite number of ways, and everyone has their own way that they're a fan of doing, and they want to tell you about it and tell you that you should do it that way. These things specifically happening around, like, Home Manager, I've discovered that there are a lot of Home Manager fanboys out there, and they really want me to use Home Manager. Now, maybe I will decide to try Home Manager. Right now, I'm not really interested in it. But maybe eventually I will be. Maybe there's a reason why, you know, I want to try that or whatever. I don't know yet. I'm not there yet. I'm trying to take this a little slowly. But you tell someone that, and they still tell you, well, you should use Home Manager. And I'm like, like okay, but I'm not doing that yet. You know, I'm, not, I'm just not doing that yet. And another thing, so they can be a little pushing, but it's not that big of a deal. More is that because there are so many different ways of doing things, you can't take what other people do as a tutorial. So you can't, so if you have a, someone who uses NixOS who's a buddy and they have all these setups, I'm looking at you, D-dubs, you do things so many different ways. And a lot of times, you know, you can't, I can't use those things because I'm not using Home Manager and, and you know, you, you need Home Manager to do some things. Uh, other people have helped me and they they do things a certain way and it just doesn't fit with the way my configuration is set up right now. I'd have to completely rejigger it in order to get it to work. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing that I've come across so far is just that you can take inspiration from other people's configuration files. You can't pick and choose parts of configuration files to use because chances are it's not going to work unless you know exactly what you're doing. And I don't know exactly what I'm doing yet. I know some of what I'm doing, not everything. So you, it's it, it's kind of like if you've ever used Debian before and you kind of mix and match from unstable and stable and you know all this stuff and you, you end up with Frank and Debian. You can kind of do that with NixOS too, but only you'll have a NixOS configuration file that just doesn't build because you've done things in a different syntax or you've put things in a different place than someone else has, but you've stolen from them. You know, Now, because of the way NixOS is, you could take the entire configuration file and it would work fine, but taking bits and pieces of it can lead to some problems, and I've discovered that. So overall, I will say this. It has been a good experience. I'm not going to say it's been a great experience. I, I miss OpenSUSE, okay? I knew I was going to. NixOS is, or OpenSUSE is my home, and I'm, I'm going to be very happy to go back to it eventually. Um, but they, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder, so we'll have to see how that goes. But I haven't discovered anything that's gonna, that, that has pointed to me not being able to do this. It's easier and more stable, at least so far, than I thought it was going to be. When I've made a mistake in the configuration file, it doesn't break everything. The computer doesn't explode. So I've gained some confidence in my ability to do this configuration file and the flake that goes along with it, you know, to, to do things and not break everything. Like, I'm, I'm at that point where I'm kind of confident. I know what my configuration does because I've done it all by myself. And while I've had input from friends, it, it, everything has been my work and I've been able to, I could point to one line and tell you exactly what it does. And I think that that's helped me a lot, that, that, that ability to know that if something breaks, I can fix it. At least so far, I feel that way. Now, maybe I'll come across, you know, a, a boulder in the road somewhere along the line and I won't be able to fix it. In which case, I'll have to roll back or something. You know, I'll I'll try a program or something. It'll just break something. I don't, you know, it happens. But overall, I have to say I'm very pleased with my experience so far, such as it is. So that is it for my first week of NixOS. Now you guys will probably get this like a day after, so I'm technically on day eight when you guys watch this. But you know, just know that I'm continuing on, and I'm okay. Now I've made videos while I'm on NixOS, so all that stuff works. All the basic stuff is here. The services are all where I need them to be. I, I've been 
somewhat surprised that most of the like icons and fonts and stuff have managed to be imported because I just figured it would be different, but it's not. It's mostly the same. I will say that if you do decide to use NixOS, they don't use .fonts, .themes, and .icons in the home directory anymore. That stuff has been depreciated in Linux in general, but most distros still support it. NixOS does not. So you have to put it in .local, share, fonts, or whatever in order to get that stuff to work. I had to learn that along the way, but it wasn't that big of a deal. So overall, good experience. If you have any comments on this so far, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I know this was a little rambly. I, 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 most of these probably will be rambly until I get to the final review, which I'll script, but that's, you know, 723 days away. So we got some time. Anyways, comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux cast. There you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I put out for all my supporters. Basically, it's just me sitting in front of this, this microphone for about 15 minutes or so talking about random stuff sometimes it's linux sometimes it's not linux the, the the topic is whatever comes to mind at the time so if you would enjoy that kind of rambly stuff support me on patreon and youtube you got that every week so there you go if you want to support me and get something physical back in return you can go to shop.thelinuxcast.org there you'll find hats and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff all the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you very much for those of you who have done that. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just went up anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I seriously appreciate it, guys. You're, you're amazing. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.